The choice, that fork in the road, is to go with the head and the mind and let that dominate our perception and decision making, or to go with the heart and let our feelings and intuitive knowing lead us in the directions that we need to go. It transforms your life from an existence to an amazing synchronistic series of coincidences that make life much more interesting, much more enjoyable, and much more full of vitality than just mind following the programs round and round and round and round. And what I think we're seeing is the breaking down of the old energetic construct, which is going to allow the new one to replace it as the correction comes in. The old paradigm's breaking down, and we've got now the opportunity to uh, go with a new one. Just when the caterpillar thought life was over, it became a butterfly. Often it's just at the point where you think there's nothing else you can do, and it's all over and it's all finished. It's happened to me a few times. Suddenly, you become a butterfly. You overcome it. You realize you're much greater than you thought you were because the challenge has taken you to that point where you could make that leap. We're starting to wake up. What can we do practically? Stop making excuses. You know, the human mind, <clears throat> because it doesn't want to change, it doesn't want consciousness to become the governor of perception. It wants to hold on to its power base and it will make endless excuses why we should not do what is necessary to become conscious and bring mind into line. It will find endless reasons why we shouldn't do things we'd rather not do, but really we feel we need to do them. So we'll find an excuse why we can't do it. And we can stop making excuses for looking the other way when basic freedoms are being taken away. And crucially, humanity, human race, can get off its bloody knees. We have been down there in so many different forms all the way through this period of slavery. We need to stop looking up at anything and start looking everything in the eye because nothing is greater than we are and we are no greater than anything else because we are all in the end the same consciousness. Martin Luther King. A man cannot ride your back unless it's bent. We cannot be controlled if we get up off our knees. I will not contribute to this slaughter and injustice. It's time to let go of fear. Consciousness doesn't do bloody fear. Mind does fear. We're consciousness. Therefore, we can choose our own journey and our own direction. We don't have to be dictated to by idiots, brain donors in dark suits who dictate to us what we can and cannot do. Hate is what mind does. Love in its true sense is what consciousness does. That's the choice. We need to come together and stop cooperating with the system that is enslaving us and depends on our cooperation to survive. This is not a conspiracy to enslave Jewish people or Muslim people or middle class Americans or Hindus or Australians. This is a conspiracy to enslave the entire human family. Therefore, if we do not come together in unity and mutual support behind that which affects us all, i.e. our freedoms are being taken away by the day, then Let's sit in a prison cell or a concentration camp and let's sit around and argue who had the best religion, the best culture, the best race. Let's do that then. We'll have plenty of bloody time if we're still alive. As Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Freedom of speech is the freedom to speak your view and express your version of life. If any one person is stopped from having that freedom, then no one else has freedom of speech. They only have the freedom to stay within the parameters of what is decided they can say. While one person is not free to speak their truth, no one is. They're only free to comply with what the authorities say is acceptable to speak. In the end, said Martin Luther King, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Pastor Neomoller, after the Second World War in Germany, 
First they came for the Jews and I was not a Jew so I did nothing. Then they came for the trade unionists and I was not a trade unionist so I did nothing. Then they came for the communists and I was not a communist so I did nothing. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak out for me. And that's what's happening now. Let's turn attention against these people and these people and these people. Let's pick them off and then we'll come for you. Unity is what will bring this to an end. Not looking the other way because it doesn't affect us in the moment. It will affect us eventually if we do that. And look at your children and grandchildren in the face, I say to those people. And tell them what you were doing when the fascist global police state was coming in. What were you doing, mummy and daddy? When this state took over all aspects of my life? Oh, I was watching a game show, honey. It was a good one that night. Or, in terms of people in uniform, Oh, I was helping to bring it in, dear. And that's what people in uniform need to understand. They are policing in a state that also affects them and their children. They're just pawns in the game. And they're pawns in the game that are enslaving not only other people, they're enslaving their own families by playing a part in this. It's time to wake up and grow up. What is there to fear about them? Nothing. What is there to fear about authority? Nothing. We are consciousness. All that is, has been and ever will be. There is nothing to fear. Whatever happens, we are always that. Mind fears, because it's programmed to fear. When we're conscious, there's no fear in this. It's a shake of the head. Pathetic. Pathetic. We need to walk away. Because without our acquiescence, it cannot survive. 